Well, hello there, YouTube. We got breaking news tonight, and uh, it looks like the call for Pope Francis's head, basically, uh, or his resignation, uh, is starting to increase. And it's amazing because I just talked about this in a previous video where I said something's brewing. Something I've been talking about this for a couple weeks. Something is brewing, and uh, they're I think they're trying to get this Pope out. They're trying to get him out, and that will make way for the final pope, and uh, that's going to make way for the Antichrist and the establishment of the New World Religion, or the New World Order, with the Catholic Church as its religion. I've been saying this for a while, there's some naysayers out there, but as we can see here, um, that these cardinals and, and people are starting to accuse the pope of heresy, and there's specifically seven heresies that they said that he's uh, he's uh, guilty of, and um, they uh, basically want him to renounce the things that he's been teaching and saying. Now, what's interesting is I've I've read these seven things, and and I'm not a big person in Catholic doctrine, but some of it seems like he might be on the mark. And then there's other ones where I'm like, uh, heck no. I mean, have you read the Bible kind of stuff, you know? So, um, this is a very interesting situation. I mean, we had the last Pope resign out of nowhere, first Pope to do so in over 600 years. And a couple hours later, lightning strikes the Vatican cross, the Vatican temple cross, like twice in a row. Okay? Lightning from heaven. I did a video about that with some commentary, so I encourage you to check that out. And then now, not many years later, we've got this pope who is being accused of heresy, uh, which it, which could be used to get him out, you know, to, to kick him out. And you also got Pope Benedict, who's, you know, wormed his way back in. And he was the one that resigned out of nowhere. And he's going against the pope as well. So, like, they're working together to try to get this pope, uh, Pope Francis, out. Hmm. Wonder why. So... If we look at what's been going on, uh, there's the main concerns about these seven heresies that they claim that the Pope is uh, guilty of, and they include, uh, you know, some of the following, basically, if, if you give a summary, uh, he was refusing to answer the five yes or no questions that were submitted by four cardinals, two of them who are, like, now deceased, interesting, asking him to confirm that his teaching does not abolish five teachings of the Catholic faith. Now, the teaching they're referring to is he released a, a new, uh, I'm not sure what they call it, but basically it's his proclamation, if you will, that basically said that uh, within marriage, things have now changed. And, you know, calling for the uh, adaptation of different uh, love and behaviors within marriage and outside of marriage now that are more in line with the current times. Mm -hmm. So they have a, a concern about that, and, you know, okay, <laughs> I'm sure, you know, if they're holding their Catholic uh, teaching, you know, about uh, no sex before marriage, and only being married by the Catholic Church, and all that stuff, if they hold that so dear, then with him coming out and saying stuff like that, I'm sure it did ruffle some feathers, but we're going to look at both sides of the situation. So, another concern they had was that he forcibly uh, intervened at the 2015 uh, uh, Synod of the Family, where he insisted on inserting into a midterm report a proposal that didn't receive sufficient votes to be in there, but he wanted to put it in anyway, to allow communion for adulterers and a proposal that pastors should emphasize the positive aspects of lifestyles the Church considers gravely sinful including civil remarriage after divorce and premarital cohabitation, okay? Living together without being married. And so it seems like he was coming out and he's saying, look, uh, maybe these things aren't so bad. You know, maybe uh, living together and not being married is not so bad, not such a bad idea. Hmm, okay. And, um, you know, civil remarriage. Now, you know, the Catholic Church has this, this teaching that, uh, you know, that once you're you're divorced, you're, you shouldn't be remarried. And that is rooted in some of what Jesus taught, and, and we don't have the whole time to get into that, but 
You know, there's nothing in the scripture that says you can't live together before you're married. There's nothing there. Okay, and I've been a Christian over 20 years. There's nothing that says you can't do that. I don't know. I think that the whole basis of that was that if you're living together, then you might be more tempted to have sex before you're married, and then that is actually a sin in the Bible and in the Catholic Church as well. Of course, you wouldn't think so with the stuff that the Catholic Church has been doing. But, premarital, premarital cohabitation. So, Francis is coming out saying there's positive aspects to people that are living together before they get married and uh, people that get married after they've been uh, divorced. And apparently the church does not like that very much. So that's one of their concerns. And, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, finally, another concern they had was him endorsing an interpretation of the exhortation by Vienna Cardinal Christoph Schonborn that allows for Holy Communion to be given to adulterers. Okay, <sighs> hmm. Now, again, this is something I'm, I'm not totally disagreeing with. Now, you've got to look at the Catholic Church here. The Catholic Church believes that you are saved uh, by works and grace. In other words, it's Jesus dying for you, but it's also about what you do. And they teach that you can fall away from your salvation just as quickly as you can get it, and that you have to follow all the tenets uh, of the Catholic Church in order to keep it. So, they believe that if you're an adulterer, you should not be having uh, uh, partaking in Holy Communion. Well, Francis came out and said, Hey, you know what? Um, this Cardinal Christoph uh, Schonborn uh, said that you should be able to do it anyway. And Francis kind of agreed. And now the church is all up in arms. Here's the deal. The reality is that the scripture does teach that if you have... Uh, a situation in your life that's that um, is unconfessed, sin is unconfessed in your life, okay? Or if you're not a believer, you have not received Jesus in your life, uh, you have, uh, you know, your sins are still unforgiven because you haven't received Jesus in your life to forgive them, that your heart is not ready for Holy Communion to take part in the Lord's Supper. Okay, so... <sighs> That's what it says. Now, according to the Catholic Church, if you're an adulterer, which means basically you got divorced and you got remarried, or you're married and you went and been with somebody else, that you should not be able to receive communion. Pope Francis is coming out saying you should still be able to receive communion. So, you see, these are very vague. That's what's very interesting. Very, very vague. But, um, you know, that's something else that they're concerned about. So, let's jump on to the seven... Quickly, the seven heresies specifically that they are saying he's guilty of and they want him to renounce these heresies or, as they put, action needs to be taken to save the life of the church and people's souls. Now, I just want to preface this by saying, you know, the Catholic Church thinks that they are the one true church of the whole world. They believe that God only reveals to them what the truth is and that the Pope is the vicar of Christ, the one who's holding the place for Christ until he comes back. And they, they believe that they have all the knowledge and that basically everybody else is wrong. We know that from the Apostles' Creed. One holy Roman Catholic Church, okay? You know, for the whole world. So, that's what these guys are speaking from. So, alright, so the first heresy is uh, what they claim. These are the ones that they say Pope Francis is guilty of. Number one, a justified person has not the strength, with God's grace, to carry out the objective demands of the divine law, as though any of the commandments of God are impossible for the justified, or as meaning that God's grace, when it produces justification, okay, which is forgiveness, and an individual does not invariably, and of its nature, produce conversion, from all serious sin, or is not sufficient for conversion from all serious sin. Wow. I mean, is that confusing? And I know if you're listening to this, you're just like, whoa, what? Back, back that up? Okay, let's break that down. Let's unpack it because there's a lot in there. A justified person, which means a person that is justified through faith in Christ, okay? A justified person has not the strength, is not strong enough with God's grace, to carry out the objective demands of the divine law. So right there is saying that even if you're a saved person 
and you have God's grace helping you out, that you are not strong enough to carry out the requirements of the law. That is not true. The Lord would not put the law there if we weren't able to, you know, obey it. Now, is it true that we cannot obey 100% of the laws of the Scripture? Absolutely. There's no way to do that. 100% of it would make us perfect. So there is some truth to that, that with God's grace, we cannot carry out all of the divine law. Okay? Um, it says that, though as any of the commandments of God are impossible for the justified, or as meaning that God's grace, when it produces justification in an individual, uh, does not invariably and of its nature produce conversion from all serious sin. Okay. Basically what he's saying is, you receive Jesus, you, and, and they're not really saying, he's not saying receive Jesus, but he's talking about justification, which means being justified through God. So let's just roll with it, right? You get forgiven for your sin. That alone is not enough to convert you from all serious sin is what Francis is saying. There is a problem with that, because God's grace can cover a multitude of sins and deliver us from all sorts of different sins. It does not make us perfect. Of course not. We're not going to be perfect. So, you know, what Francis is saying here is, is kind of partially true, but then you get to the end of it, and it says that, you know, um, it does not pr produce conversion from all serious sin, and it's not sufficient for conversion from all serious sin. Like, in other words, is God's grace isn't enough to change us, change our sins. That is absolutely wrong, because God's grace is enough to do that, and His help. Okay? Alright. Whew, that's a lot. Number two, Christians who have obtained a civil divorce from the spouse to whom they are validly married and have contracted a civil marriage with another person during the lifetime of their spouse, that's called adultery, who live more as husband and wife with their civil partner, let's talk about the civil unions, and who choose to remain in this state with full knowledge of the nature of their act and full consent of the will to do that, are not necessarily in a state of mortal sin and can receive sanctifying grace and grow in charity. Look what's going on here. He's mixing truth with a lie. So, we read first that he's saying that you basically can have an adulterous affair while you're married and being in a civil union with somebody, and that is not necessarily, you know, a mortal sin. And now, of course, you got the Catholic Church who decides what mortal sins are and which ones aren't. In God's book, they're all sins, all sins are equal, okay? Not the consequences, but this act of sin itself, it's all sin to God. Stealing a piece of gum or murdering somebody, it's all wrong, okay? So but what they're saying is that you can receive sanctifying grace and grow in charity. So if you are an adulteress in an adulterous affair and you're seeking God to, break out, to get out of that and you're seeking God, can you receive grace from God and forgiveness? Yes, you can. But is it a sin to stay in that lifestyle? Yes, it is. And Francis here is saying it's not necessarily in a state of mortal sin. See, it's a little truth with a lie. So, yes, it is actually a sin if you're committing adultery um, and if you are married and you're kind of messing around with somebody or living with somebody, there's a problem. Okay? Definitely a problem. So, alright. Number three, really quick here. Um, Francis says a Christian believer can have full knowledge of a divine law and voluntarily choose to break it in a serious matter. Okay, so far so good. But not be in a state of mortal sin as a result of this action. Okay. Real scripture teaches that if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is what the verses say, to those who have received him have become children of God. All who have received him have been saved. All who call upon the name of the Lord have been saved. In the book of 1 John it says, I teach you these things so that you may know you have eternal life, which is forgiveness. Okay? Here Francis is saying a Christian believer can have full knowledge of, a, of divine law and voluntarily choose to break it in a serious matter, but not be in a state of mortal sin. Yeah, listen. 
I still break, okay, not man's laws, but I still break God's law in, in some ways, okay? I still struggle with things. I am not uh, in a state of mortal sin as a result of this action. So there, he's kind of correct, you know? You can choose to make a bad decision, and that doesn't mean you lose your salvation. Now, again, the Catholic Church is talking about mortal sin and immortal sin. I'm talking about the real truth of the Scripture. If you are a saved person of Jesus Christ through his blood, and you make a mistake, you do not lose your salvation because you, because you made that, you know, made that mistake. Even if you make it over and over again, it's not okay that we're doing it, but you're not losing your salvation because of it. So, all right, uh, let's see, number four. A person is able while he obeys a divine prohibition, something you're not supposed to do. A person is able while he obeys a divine prohibition to sin against God by that very act of obedience. That's weird. So he's saying that a person is able while they're obeying a divine prohibition. So if you're obeying something that God says not to do, and you're obeying him, that it's possible to sin against God by being obedient. I don't... That's crazy. That's heresy. Absolutely. That is not... That's not correct at all. How can you be sinning against God by being obedient? I mean, think about that for a minute. Yeah. All right. Number five. Um, conscience can truly and rightly judge that sexual acts between persons who have contracted a civil marriage with each other Although one or both of them is sacramentally married to the another person, can sometimes be morally right, or requested, or even commanded by God. Wait a minute. Conscience can truly and rightly judge that sexual acts between persons who have contracted a civil marriage with each other, although one or both of them is sacramentally married to another person, this is adultery, okay, can sometimes be morally right? That's a heresy. You got Pope Francis saying that you could be married and be involved in sexual acts with somebody else and that can sometimes be morally right or even requested or commanded by God? That sounds like a defense of the pedophilia situation. That's what that sounds like to me. And it's pissing me off, frankly, now that I'm reading it again. That's what that sounds like. Oh, well, no, it's really okay to have these sexual acts. And, God may be requesting that you do it. Heresy. Absolute heresy. Something that the Antichrist would say. You can be married to somebody and still screw around with somebody else and it might actually be morally right or requested or even commanded by God. Absolutely insane. Number six. Moral principles and moral truths contained in divine revelation and in the natural law do not include negative prohibitions that absolutely forbid particular kinds of action, inasmuch as these are always gravely unlawful on account of their object. Again, what the heck is he talking about? Okay, moral principles and moral truths contained in divine revelation, okay, so in the scriptures, and in the natural law, do not include negative prohibitions that absolutely forbid particular kinds of action. So pretty much you can do what you want, that's what it sounds like. It doesn't include negative prohibitions. Or is that prohibitions that would be bad? Hmm. And as much as these are always gravely unlawful or on account of their object. I'm not going to pretend to understand what that means. So I'll leave that up to you <sighs> out there. Tell me what that means in the comments section below. All right, finally. Francis says, Our Lord Jesus Christ wills that the church abandon her perennial discipline of refusing the Eucharist which the Eucharist, by the way, that the Catholic Church does is a farce, to the divorced and remarried and of the refusing absolution, they believe that they can absolve you of your sins too, the Catholic Church. Yeah, no, only Jesus can do that. Sorry. Uh, okay, our Lord Jesus Christ wills that the Church abandon her perennial discipline of refusing the Eucharist to the divorced and remarried and of refusing absolution to the divorced and remarried who do not express contrition for their state of life and a firm purpose of amendment with regard to it. Again, they're talking about their laws, about who can have the Eucharist, which is the Holy Communion, and who can't. And so he's trying to say here that the Lord Jesus 
wants the church to stop saying who can have the Holy Communion and who can't. Uh, I'm not going to say that Jesus is saying that, but I can say that the Bible actually says that if you're a saved Christian, you are welcome to join in the Last Supper, the Holy Communion, okay? It has nothing to do with any of this other crap that they're talking about. So, those are the seven things. Um, I'm trying to keep this video under 20 minutes, but it looks like we're going to go just past it. But the clergy and the scholars state that these uh, propositions all contradict truths that are divinely revealed and that the Catholics must believe with the ascent of divine faith that they add it is necessary that such heresies be condemned by the authority of the church on account of the great and imminent danger that they cause to souls. So this is what's happening. Keep a close eye on this. I believe that Pope Francis is going to be on his way out the door and there's a prophecy out there, the prophecy of uh, Malachi. You, you can look it up. Um, it's going to be very interesting to see who rises up as a pope next. But I have a funny feeling it's going to be the last pope. And he's going to usher in the last new world order. I believe it's coming. So comment below, like, share, hit the notification button. If you disagree with me, let me know. If you agree, let me know. I appreciate you guys watching and listening. God bless. Take care.